Hi, and welcome back to Museum at Home. Now today we are on a quest. It's a quest to find dragons and we'll be investigating objects from China to find out why dragons play such an important role in Chinese culture. Now, dragons appear in legends across the world. What do we think of when we imagine a dragon? Probably a long tail, smoke billowing from a mouth full of sharp teeth, maybe wings and a powerful roar. Dragons might be mythical creatures, imagined animals, but they fill our stories and our legends. Can you think of any stories involving dragons? Well, there's Saint George and the dragon who he famously killed to stop it from destroying a village. What other dragons do we know of? Well, there are dragons that fill our childhood stories, our fairy tales like Sleeping Beauty, princess guarded by a dragon in a tower. And there are more modern stories too. Just think of Harry Potter and the terrifying Norwegian Ridgeback dragon. But there is somewhere in the world where dragons are more than just stories. They are a symbol. They're a representation of power, of strength, and of royalty. And that place is China. So, on today's Museum at Home, let's discover where we can find dragons in Chinese culture. First of all, take a look at this object. Let's use our key question words to think about it. What? What is this object? What shapes and what patterns can we see? What textures and what is it made of? Where? Where is this object from? And when? When was it made? Is it old or is it modern? How? How was it made? How was it put together? And why? What is its purpose? Why was it made? Now have a closer look and you will see a rather fierce creature in this object. Can you spot a snout, an eye, and a curving body that snakes into a tail? Yes, that is our first Chinese dragon. Now this is a piece of bronze which was shaped around 3,000 years ago. Even 3,000 years ago, dragons were a huge part of Chinese culture. Ancient Chinese societies described the gods of the dragon, and dragons were considered to be rulers of water and the weather. But what did a Chinese dragon look like? Well, they were described in many ways, often as being a bit of a mashup between other animals. Horns of a deer, head of a crocodile, scales of a fish, feet of a tiger, all mixed together to create this legendary dragon. Some were described as having wings, but most didn't. And the dragon's scales, which covered its body, were considered to have a very ancient and old significance and importance. With 117 scales in total, 81 would contain positive energy or yang and 36 would contain negative energy or yin. If you look closely at our 3,000 year old dragon in bronze here you can see the scales. Now have a look at this dragon. Now this one was made in China in the 8th century so about 1,200 years ago. Now this one is a more modern dragon than our last dragon in bronze, but it is still pretty old. This object, this dragon, played an important role in the Chinese calendar. He is one of the symbols of the Chinese zodiac. Now here he is with the other 11 animals that make up the symbols, the signs of the Chinese zodiac. But what does zodiac mean? Well, it's a system in which a different symbol 
is assigned, is given to each year. The year of the rat, the year of the monkey, the year of the dragon. Every year has its own animal and these come in 12 year cycles. And some legends say that when you are born under a particular animal, this will affect what kind of person you grow up to be. So, for example, if you were born in the year of the monkey, you might be quite lively and a bit of a prankster. So what about the symbol of the dragon? What did that show? Well, the dragon stands for strong and powerful leaders. It's a very important symbol and very, very admired. In fact, the dragon is such an important symbol in China that it became a symbol of the rulers of China, the emperors themselves. Take a look at this dragon. Now, this was made in the 16th century, so about 500 years ago. And look carefully at it. It's an incredibly fragile object, but can you work out what it's made of? Is it hard or is it soft? Is it painted? Well, if you look very closely, you'll see that it isn't painted. It is woven out of silk and thread, so it's fabric. And even though the colours may have faded a little over time, it is still incredibly bright. So we know what material it is, but what was it used for, this piece of material? Well, this is called a medallion and it would probably have been used as part of the decoration of a robe. So it would be worn as part of some clothing. So how would we describe this particular dragon that we found? Well, I think we might say that this one is fierce, fearsome, terrifying, with those huge teeth, those bright eyes, the claws, and that snake-like body. He certainly looks strong and powerful. And the dragon represented just that, strength and power, which is why the emperors of China, the rulers, used the dragon as a symbol. A dragon with five claws, five talons or nails, was often associated with the emperor himself. Now, how many claws does this dragon have? It's got five claws. So this dragon is an imperial one, a dragon linked to the emperor. Now the emperor of China was an incredibly powerful person and ruled at that time over a population of about 160 million people. So a powerful dragon was a natural image to represent him. Legends suggest that emperors might be born with a mark on their body in the shape of a dragon, showing that they were born with this royal power. And all over royal palaces and even tombs, places where emperors were buried, you will find carvings of dragons. So today we have discovered the history of the dragon in China. Now, if you've enjoyed this topic, then head to the resource pack which you can find in the description of this YouTube video or on the Museum at Home website and have a go at some activities and learn a little bit more about the Chinese zodiac. And join me next time as we explore the world of modern art again. So, see you next time for another Museum at Home.